time lapse of artificial intelligence 2030 to 3000 plus. Have you wondered what life will look like 10 years from now? And what pops to mind when we say 20 years? Yup, science and technology has been growing on a never before pace. And so that makes it interesting to speculate what AI advancements await us in the future. So don't forget to watch today's video to the very end to not miss out on a time lapse of artificial intelligence 2030 to 3000. But before we begin, we request you subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss another upload of ours. Having said that, let's jump right in. 2028, 2029, 2030. Tech of the future, the nanobots. It's believed that by 2030, nanobots will plug our brains straight into the cloud. It will give us full immersion virtual reality from within the nervous system. Just like we do now with our smartphones, we will be able to do it with our brains. We'll be able to expand our neocortex in the cloud. And forget about memory problems, evidence problems, etc. Moreover, people will even be in reincarnation through AI. Sounds scary, we know. And probably most of the religious people will be very against it. However, it's said that we will be able to bring back our relatives through artificial intelligence by sending nanobots into people's brains to extract memories of loved ones. Augment that with a DNA sampling of the deceased, and it will be possible to create a convincing virtual version of somebody who's passed on. If you're interested in it, there's a movie about it, The Discovery. 2080, 2090, 2100. By 2050, IoT technology will be in 95% of electronics for new product designs. And by 2050, it's expected to have everything connected to the cloud and to the internet. So you can stay assured, even if you've resurrected at least 150, you remain connected to the internet. Deep in underground mines, some zones are inaccessible. But companies like Inconova started to work on building drones that fly, drive, and climb, and use laser technology to scan zones and create a 3D map of them. With this advancing aerial robotics technology, we will be able to push human reach to any space untouched by man-made infrastructure. Also, in 2080 and beyond, carbon footprints will be viewed as socially unacceptable, much like drink driving is today. The COVID-19 pandemic will have focused the public's attention on the need to take action to deal with threats to our way of life, our health, and our future. Public attention will drive government policy and behavioral changes, with carbon footprints becoming a subject of worldwide scrutiny. Individuals, companies, and countries will seek the quickest and most affordable ways to achieve net zero, the creation of a sustainable and net zero future will be built through a far reaching energy transformation that significantly reduces the world's carbon emissions and through the emergence of a massive carbon management industry that captures, utilizes, and eliminates carbon dioxide. We'll see a diversity of new AI technologies aimed at both reducing and removing the world's emissions, unleashing a wave of innovation to compare with the industrial and digital revolutions of the past. 2300, 2310, 2320. By 2320, healthcare systems will adopt more preventative health approaches based on the developing science behind the health benefits of plant-rich, nutrient-dense diets. This trend will be enabled by AI-powered and systems biology-based technology that exponentially grows our knowledge of the role of specific phytonutrients in specific human health and functional outcomes. Armed with a much deeper understanding of nutrition, the global food industry can respond by offering a broader range of product options to support optimal health outcomes. The healthcare industry can respond by promoting Earth's plant intelligence for more resilient lives and to incentivize people to take care of themselves in an effort to reduce unsustainable costs. Also, it seems overnight we've experienced a sharp increase in delivery services with a need for day of goods from providers like Amazon and Instacart, but it's been limited today. However, with 5G networks in place hands in hands with AI tied directly into autonomous bots, goods would be delivered safely within hours. Wi-Fi can't scale to meet higher capacity demands. Sheltering in place has moved businesses and classrooms to video conferencing, highlighting poor quality networks. Low latency 5G networks would resolve this lack of network reliability and even allow for more high capacity servers like telehealth, telesurgery, and ER services. Businesses can offset the high cost of mobility with economy boosting activities, including smart factories, real-time monitoring, and content intensive real-time edge computer services. 5G private networks will also make this possible and change the mobile services economy. The rollout of 5G creates markets that we only imagine, like self-driving bots, along with the mobility as a service economy, and others we can't even imagine, enabling next generations to invent thriving markets and prosperous causes. 2400, 2500, 2600. Thanks to advances in cloning technology, we might be able to bring back animals like the woolly mammoths. But according to Akira Iritani, a professor at Kyoto University, quote, now the technical problems have been overcome. 
All we need is a good sample of soft tissue from a frozen mammoth. Russian scientists are already working on doing just that. And the big question in the medical community isn't, is it possible, but should we do it? Also, according to futurist Ray Kurzweil, computers will be able to paint, write, and compose far better than humans ever will at this point. Google's X Lab made another announcement in 2014 that they're working on a pill that'll send microscopic particles into your bloodstream, capable of identifying cancers and even future heart attacks long before they become deadly. We prefer a cancer cure, but knowing about cancer years before it's diagnosed could save millions of lives. And that sure sounds like a lot of AI to us. What's more by this point? Well, weren't we all supposed to have robot butlers or maids by now? Even David Eagleman, the neuroscientist and writer, is disappointed. I predicted that 20 years ago, when I was a sanguine boy loving Star Wars, and the smartest robot we have now is the Roomba vacuum cleaner, he says. Even though he's holding out for robot assistance, quote, I won't be surprised if I'm wrong in another 25 years. Artificial intelligence has proved itself an unexpectedly difficult problem. As for fears that robots will soon steal all of our jobs, Wired Magazine isn't too concerned. As they reported last year, the problem we're facing isn't that robots are coming, it's that they aren't. Unless. 2800, 2900, 3000. Not only as personal assistants and vacuum cleaners. Ask any person and they'll tell you, oh yeah, we're making robots that are way too smart. We're all doomed. Sam Altman, president of Y Combinator, a Silicon Valley startup, believes that, quote, we will be the first species ever to design our own descendants. Dr. Nayev al a neuroscientist and geostrategist, which are two occupations that almost sound like fake jobs from a science fiction movie, says that it's only a matter of time before human beings create transhumans, which are just improved versions of themselves that will eventually pose a threat to non-enhanced humans. Okay, we're all on board with the not getting sick part but tiny robots in our bloodstream that might also be transmitting our personal thoughts to a data mining cloud? That sounds downright Orwellian. But we like the idea of not getting cancer because of our robot protectors. Hmm. Well, if it won't be a reality until a long time from now, according to some predictions, we still have time to think about it and not seriously ponder the ethical dilemma until it's too late. Also, robotic earthworms will gobble up our garbage, they say. Do you want to know what any of that means? Or is it enough to know that Tiny, agile robots teams will go through mines and landfills to extract anything of value. It's possible that the less you know about your robotic earthworm garbage men, the better. More importantly, let's talk about prosthetic brains. They were first announced in 2003, but we're still years away from a commercially available neuroprosthetic. Brian Johnson, who launched a startup called Kernel, is making strides to be the first to produce a brain implant. Just like we've had civil rights, human rights, abortion rights, marriage rights, the next big debate to consume our society will be evolution rights, he says. With that, we end today's video. If you enjoyed our content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Lastly, join in next time for more of such interesting content.